Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, our contingent from London had a little trouble getting in the airport with the weather, but uh, all is safe and sound, and they are here. So welcome to uh, University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, and we're very honored this afternoon to have with us uh, a wonderful contingent from the London New Year's Day Parade to present our invitation. Uh, I would like to take just a moment to introduce everybody that's on stage to you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Randall Coleman. I'm the director of bands here at the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. We also have on stage uh, Professor Rob Truon, our assistant director of bands. Uh, Ethan McDaniel, our percussion professor at UTC. Yes, you can applaud for them. There you go. We also have our drum majors for the 23-24 season. We have Matthew Warren, Justin Hayes, and Dylan Campbell. We're also very honored to have our administrators here from UTC. Uh, we have our Interim Department Chair for Performing Arts, Kenyon Wilson. We have our Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences at UTC, Pam riggs Glasgow. And our Provost from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Gerald Hale. And our contingency from London, uh, you will be quizzed when we're done to figure out, make sure you remember everybody. Uh, and I'll ask them to stand up and wave so you can see them. First of all, uh, longtime friend uh, Bill Northern, who's the Senior Director for International Participation. Bill. We have Dina Blonsky, who is the Special International Envoy and Deputy Director of Client Relations. He's down here. We also have senior patron Duncan Sands, who's the former Lord Mayor of the City of Westminster, and uh, the great grandson of Winston Churchill on stage. And then the founder and director of the London New Year's Day Parade, again, someone I've known for a long time, tremendous respect for, and he's going to come up and speak to you for just a moment. This is Mr. Bob Bone, the founder and director of the London New Year's Day Parade. Hello everybody, and again my apologies for being late. I um, don't know why really, they told us we were going to land in good time and then we just seemed to go round and round in circles, but don't mind. <laughs> we're here now, and thank you for waiting. Um, as Mr. Common said, uh, my name is Bob Bone, I remember that much, and um, I'm now the chairman, uh, and was the, and am, the founder of London's New Year's Day Parade and Festival. Uh, and my job most of the time is to come and talk to people like you and invite them to the parade, which is a really, really great part of the job. And all the messy stuff I leave now to other people, that's great. Um, so, uh, my job today really is to tell you a little bit about, about the parade and the festival. Um, we call our event the greatest event in the greatest city in the world. And um, nobody's arguing. That's good. I, 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 I kind of like that. Um, <laughs> normally when you say, say it's the greatest city in the world, people start throwing things at you because they all think they live in the greatest city in the world. And we have to end up saying we're the equal greatest city in the world. And stuff like that. But anyway, you've accepted it. Good. Um, <laughs> So I have to tell you why we're the greatest event. That's what I'm capable of doing. And then I'm going to hand over to Duncan Sands, former Lord Mayor of the City of Westminster, and therefore extremely well placed to tell you a little bit about London and why we make the claim about London being the greatest city in the world. So let's start off about our event on New Year's Day, which incidentally is the 1st of January. Um, I once did an interview with, uh, with a well-known morning radio host in London. Very long, good puff piece for the parade. We went on for about a 15 minutes. And the last question was, now tell me, Bob, what is the day that this event takes place on, the New Year's Day parade? <laughs> so it's not as obvious as you think. Anyway, so, um, anyway, greatest event 
in the world. Let's justify it with a few numbers. Uh, in our event every New Year's Day in the centre of London, we have between 8,500 and 10,000 participants. Those 8,500 to 10,000 people are drawn from, or well, this year we're drawn from 26 different countries around the world. So we're a truly, truly international event. Uh, and putting that number of uh, participants into some sort of perspective, um, there's a little event here, uh, well, in the northeast in New York City on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, a parade, I think, uh, it's got the name of a department store, as I recall. And um, they think they're a pretty big deal. I think it's, is it Macy's? Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the one. Uh, they think they're pretty big. Well, they have about four and a half thousand people roughly every year in that event. Just remember, we have eight and a half to ten. Makes us twice as big as Macy's in terms of participation. We're very, very proud of that fact. They couldn't care less, but we like it. Um, we do actually think it's a very good parade, Macy's, incidentally. We, we watch it very closely every year, basically to find out what not to do. Um, but no, seriously. Uh, so we're a huge event in terms of participation. Uh, and we're pretty big in terms of audience as well. We have, well this year we had 670,000 people come out onto the streets of the uh, centre center of London to watch the event on January the 1st, which runs from 12 o'clock till half past three in the afternoon. So it's a long event. Uh, but those two thirds of a million people stay right through. They turn up very, very early in the morning to get the best positions on the side of the, uh, up by the railings to watch the thing. And they stay right through to the bitter, well not bitter, to the glorious end. And, um, of course, why do they come out? Well, the answer to that is perfectly obvious. It's the weather, isn't it? Because it's always beautiful, sunny, warm. <laughs> probably, probably not. But uh, you were going to believe me for a minute, weren't you? Um, <laughs> so, uh, no, why do they come out? Well, obvious, obvious. It's the quality of the entertainment that we are putting out there for the uh, three and a half hours of the uh, not quite so warm and sunny day. Um, we carry out sort of market research, audience research, uh, every year of the parade uh, to find out what people like best. And I have to tell you, in all honesty, absolutely true, that for every single year that we've carried out the audience research, the answer is exactly the same. People like the American high school and college marching bands that come to perform in the event. It's true, they really do. And, well, some of them say the cheerleaders, but anyway, I don't mind. Uh, marching bands come out on top. And um, we sort of scratched our heads a little bit to work out why that might be the case. Not that you're not fantastic and brilliant and exciting and spectacular and musically superb. No, 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 no. But why is it that we just come. Well, we don't have marching bands like yours. Yeah, we have plenty of military bands, we have plenty of community bands and so on, but nothing as spectacular as what you do. Uh, so that's one thing. Then we, of course, had to scratch our heads being proud Brits to work out why it was that we don't have marching bands like yours, and we came to the conclusion very, very rapidly, it's because in England we play proper football, and we don't, <laughs> and we don't have to have a marching band to make two and a half, three hours of mind-numbing sport, as I call it, uh, vaguely entertaining. So, um, I mean, how many times have you read reports on games of football where it says that, you know, that it was pretty terrible, but thank goodness there was a marching band there to make it, make it a bit better. Anyway, um, that may or may not be true, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, then we'll come to the uh, TV audience for our event, which is broadcast all around the world, and this year the TV of the entire live show, three and a half hours of it, all three and a half hours of it, broadcast live all around the world, this year reached 340 million homes. Now, I'm not claiming that everybody watched it in those homes, but that was our reach. And we do know that a lot of people did watch it, and literally all around the world. In this country, 
Uh, we have had a deal now for a number of years uh, with PBS, uh, American Public Television, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, and I'm pleased to say that we've, uh, we've just signed up for another three years. They take our event live and whole uh, for the whole three and a half hours. And uh, many stations actually repeat it and repeat it and repeat it, which is great, <coughs> because of course, on the West Coast, uh, people don't necessarily want to get up at four o'clock in the morning to watch us, and so it's quite nice to be able to watch it a bit later on. Um, and the great thing from our point of view, why we've signed the deal with PBS, is because we can guarantee everybody, everybody that takes part, that they are going to be seen on the television programme. There are no ad breaks. Therefore, where commercial channels might decide that they, oh, they're not worth any money to us, potentially, so we're just going to cut them uh, and play an ad for, I don't know, McDonald's or something. Um, with us, with PBS, no breaks. So you're definitely seen. However, we do not want anybody anybody to see you on television live because we want you all to come to London. Supporters as well as players and members of the band. So uh, have I sort of made the event sound like it's something you might want to come to? Yes. Well, frankly, if that's the sort of response that I'm going to get, I don't know whether we're going to carry on with this. I, can we just be a little bit more enthusiastic about it, if you don't mind? Is this the sort of event that you might like to come to on January the 1st? Yeah! Okay, well, yeah, that's good. Very good. But you're going to have to do a little bit better than that now. Uh, because I'm just about to ask Duncan Sands to come and talk to you about London. Now, the thing is that he thinks that he gets a lot more applause than I ever do. Uh, and it's basically because I tell everybody to make a lot of noise for him. Um, but anyway, let's just flatter him and let's just, let's just have you make an awful lot of noise for Duncan because if you do and he feels suitably, uh, suitably impressed, then he will issue you with the invitation to come to London. But I'm actually only teasing him because this is our last presentation of the week. Anyway, a lot of noise for Duncan Sands, please. Well, thank, thank you very much, and it's, uh, it's great to be back in Chattanooga. I will just say as a, a slight aside to this that uh, a few years ago, I discovered that uh, both my grandmother and my great-grandfather had visited Chattanooga in 1932. So uh, uh, we have a familial connection just of visiting Ch Chattanooga in the last century. Um, so let me talk a little bit about London. It's obviously been an international city for centuries. Um, it's uh, full of history and culture. And people from all over the world have made London their home. Uh, people have you know, come uh, from all over the world to work in London and of course lots of people like to come and visit London as well. It's the seat of our monarchy, it's the seat of Parliament uh, and also of our government. Uh, we've got lots of tourist attractions, for instance like uh, the London Eye. Uh, we have uh, world-class museums like the National Gallery, uh, the Tate Modern, to name British Museum to name just a few. Um, and we have history by the bucket load. So even just, just sort of three headline ones, the Tower of London, Westminster Abbey, St Paul's Cathedral, um, that's just scratching the surface of the history that you can find uh, in London. But probably the best way for me really to describe London um, is to describe uh, the parade route, uh, which takes place right in the centre of London throughout the, through the sort of historic part uh, of the city. But first of all, let me just ask for a show of hands um, who has been to London before? Okay, so just, just a... Uh, uh, Bob, you didn't put your hand up. Uh, <laughs> so, anyway, it's, um, uh, you know, that's, that you are in for a real treat, um, since many of you haven't been to London before. So the, the parade itself starts outside London's uh, Ritz Hotel on Piccadilly. Uh, you head down Piccadilly to Piccadilly Circus, which many of you may have seen in some of the tourist ads. It's, it's, uh, it's the square with the, uh, the, the big uh, advertising, electronic advertising billboards that are often used in the tourist ads 
uh, for London. And from there you go on to Lower Regent Street and down onto Pall Mall. And at this point I really feel that I'm taking a stroll around the London version of Monopoly because many of the streets on the Monopoly board uh, for the London version are streets that the parade will pass through. So perhaps that's a, a, good, uh, a good game to pick up and, uh, uh, and see what streets there are. So from Pall Mall you go into Trafalgar Square. Now Trafalgar Square is named uh, after the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 uh, and in the middle of the square uh, is a large column with uh, the commander of that battle, Admiral Lord Nelson, uh, on top. But at the base there are four lions and it's, it's, this is something that's really important uh, to, to listen about for participants of the parade because there's a myth and obviously myths can sometimes be, uh, you know, come true. And that myth is that if the bell of Big Ben, which is in Parliament at the other end of Whitehall, just a short distance away, if that bell chimes 13 times, then the lions in Trafalgar Square will come alive. So I always say to people who are participating in the parade that as you come into Trafalgar Square, you should keep one ear open for the bell of Big Ben. If you hear it chime, I would strongly recommend that you count the chimes. And if you think that you heard 13 or you did hear 13 and the lions do come alive, um, I don't have any good advice for you apart from perhaps run for your lives. Um, from, uh, uh, from Trafalgar Square you go on to Whitehall. Now Whitehall literally is the seat of our government. It's bounded by government departments uh, on each side, uh, the full length of it. Um, and one of the first buildings that you will pass is called Banqueting House. This is the last surviving part uh, of the old Whitehall Palace, which is where our kings and queens used to live before they moved into Buckingham Palace. Now, unbeknownst to participants in an event that took place there about 350 years ago, uh, some advice has been passed on for participants in London's New Year's Day parade. So uh, on the 30th of January, 1649, we chopped the head off our king, King Charles I. And uh, that took place at Banqueting House. And the night before his execution, King Charles asked uh, for two undershirts because he didn't want to shiver in uh, what might be the January cold and for people to think that he was nervous to go to his death. And so there you have it. You've got regal advice passed down the centuries directly from King Charles I wrap up warmly when taking part in the London New Year's Day Parade. So from there you carry on uh, down Whitehall past the Cenotaph, which is the uh, national memorial to our war dead, uh, past Downing Street, number 10 Downing Street being the official residence of our Prime Minister, um, and into the part of the parade route which for me uh, is the most special and that's the finale arena. And I say that because when you get the bands into the finale arena for that last performance on the parade route. Uh, what you will find is that, you know, because we don't have large avenues in London like you have uh, in America, uh, you find that when you pack in all the spectators who are there and you pack in the bands as well, a band as well to play, as you play and, and you know, with the, the sounds that you make, it all just reverberates off the buildings. Uh, and it just is the one most magnificent end to, uh, to, to your participation in the parade. Now, as you leave the finale arena, um, you will come into Parliament Square. Parliament Square is bounded by, uh, obviously by Parliament, as the name suggests, Westminster Abbey and the Supreme Court. Uh, but it's also full of lots of statues. And there's one statue in, Trafal in uh, Parliament Square which uh, has particular personal meaning to me, uh, which is the statue of my great-grandfather, Winston Churchill. And what um, I like to say to participants in the parade is that as you come into Parliament Square, his statue is right there, and to look up at him, look up at his face, you may think when you first look that he's looking at you just a little bit gruffly, but I urge you to take a second look and you'll see that there's a little sort of wry smile there giving you a, a thumbs up uh, for the great uh, entertaining that you've done throughout the parade. Now, they say that uh, a picture tells a thousand words. Uh, I've tried to be as eloquent as I can to tell you about the parade, uh, but uh, if we can roll the video, uh, you can see what it's really like 
to take part in the New Year's Day Parade. thousands of miles to be here. Some have performed at London's New Year's Day parade before. For others, it's a brand new experience. There are 9,000 participants from 20 different countries. So they send talent scouts all over the country to find the best of the best and invite them here to London. So we're really honored to be here for this. Out of the 350,000 cheerleaders who went to summer camp, we had a top 10%. What was your favorite thing? Uh, London Eye and uh, the Fisher and throughout the New Year week, there's a superb series of concerts in some of London's greatest and most iconic music venues, featuring the most talented young musicians from the USA and Great Britain. It's the experience of a lifetime. Very excited, very excited. Very excited. Mostly nervous. Yeah. <laughs> I know they're excited to go to Oxford and uh, Windsor uh, one of our days. Our students and I were having such a good time. We're here at Windsor this afternoon. We're getting ready to go into the castle. And for a lot of my students, it's their very first time. And it's so exciting. Those lucky enough to be invited to London's New Year's Day Parade can wish many millions a happy new year and give the world a wave. Day Parade, a cherished turn of year tradition the world over. Become a London legend. It's awesome. So does that sound something like you, that you'd like to be invited to? Yeah! Well, it, it uh, gives me great pleasure to read the invitation. The founders and patrons of London's New Year's Day Parade and Festival, the greatest event in the greatest city in the world, take enormous pleasure in extending an invitation to the, the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, Marching Mocks, USA, 
to travel to London to star in the 2023-24 edition of this exclusive and prestigious world famous event. Congratulations. You accept it then. That's always something of a relief, because it's a long way to come, a difficult journey if you're going to say no, so I'm pleased you accept it. Um, we've got one more thing that we need to do, uh, and it's really quite important. We were talking about the weather earlier, were we not in London, and you all agreed that it probably wasn't as good as I was indicating it might be on January the 1st, right? Yes. Good. Okay. Cool. Um, Actually, on January the 1st, 2017, uh, the weather was atrocious. It rained a lot. In fact, it didn't just rain, it was a deluge, it was a monsoon almost, it was horrible. Um, and we had the, you know, the bands and all the other acts walking down the streets ankle deep in water. It was uh, not much fun. However, actually there was a terrific spirit in the event. Everybody thoroughly enjoyed battling the elements and taking part, and indeed all the spectators stayed, nobody went away. So it wasn't a failure in any sense of the word, but it was uncomfortable. So uh, we decided that we did not want it to rain again ever on January the 1st in London, at least between 12 o'clock and 3.30. So we asked everybody what we could do to be absolutely certain it would never rain again on January the 1st between 12 o'clock and 3.30. Did anybody have a solution? No, you're quite right. Nobody really, it took ages. And then finally, some bright spark, at least I thought it was a bright spark, didn't think it was a bright spark at first either, sure. suggested that the solution to our problem was an umbrella. <laughs> yeah, I laughed too, because I thought, well, an umbrella's jolly useful when it's raining, but it's not got much purpose when it's not raining, if you see what I mean. So. How does a, an umbrella stop it raining? And then the person said to me, you know, you should know the old saying about umbrellas. And that is, if you leave home without your umbrella on any given day, you can probably put a bet on that it's going to rain. If, however, you keep your umbrella with you all the time, then it's probably not going to rain. Well, we put this myth to the test, a bit like Duncan's lions, but this one we found actually works. Um, and so every time we come to present to a group, uh, ever since the 1st of January, 2017, we present them with London's New Year's Day Parade umbrella. <laughs> I have to tell you, and you won't be in the least bit surprised, I know, that this has worked. Ever since that fateful day in 2017, we have had no rain on January the 1st in central London between 12 o'clock and 3.30 in the afternoon. And long may that tradition continue. So what I need now is the most reliable and trustworthy person from amongst you. <laughs> who is uh, coming to London, for sure, uh, to be the custodian of the umbrella for this group. So do I have a candidate who I can rely on? Am I going to? Let's be very, very uh, certain about this, that we're right, okay? Colton, you have been selected by everybody, it seems, uh, popular acclaim to be the custodian of the umbrella. Uh, uh, umbrella. Um, so, what I want to be sure is that you are happy to accept. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Last and there has, oh. you are happy to accept, and there has been no coercion. <laughs> no coercion. <laughs> so, you all heard that, right? Yes. 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 Okay, fine. Please do. Now, don't go away yet. <laughs> don't go away yet, because now you have accepted that umbrella, this is what happened. That piece of equipment, the London New Year's Day Parade umbrella, must not leave your person at any time, any time at all, between now, <laughs> between now and 3.30 p.m. on January the 1st, 2024. So I, I'm, not, I'm quite serious about this. Morning, noon, night, in, in, take it to bed with you, please. Uh, into the shower, everywhere you go, that umbrella is yours. It's with you. Now, this is where you all come in. I know that we can trust him. I know that it's going to be absolutely fine. But, just in case, uh, we are on all of those... Oh, it's gone now. But anyway, we're on all of the... Um, what are they called? Oh, social media sites. That's it. Yeah, that dreadful thing. And it actually, we found a use for it. Um, our social media sites are all LNYDP, either at LNYDP or LNYDP.com. LNYDP, London's New Year's Day Parade. LNYDP. Got it? Right, like us, follow us, do whatever the heck you do. Um, LNYDP, don't get the last two letters the wrong way around, or you'll be communicating with the police department somewhere and you might get yourself into trouble. So, um, LNYDP, right. We know that Colton is going to keep that umbrella with him all the time. But in the very, very unlikely event that he doesn't, I need you, please, to whip out your smartphones or whatever, take a picture of him without the umbrella, <laughs> and immediately post it on one of our social media sites. Probably Instagram's the best one. And if we do see a picture of Colton without the umbrella between now and the 1st of January next year, 3.30 p.m., and it rains on the parade, we will know exactly who to blame. <laughs> <laughs> so, all we can do for you, really, to make it a little bit less painful, is to make you the first recipient of the LNYDP pin uh, for the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. So, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> That's all from us right now. Uh, I can tell you're going to be a very, very uh, rumbustious group. I think. Yeah. 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 You're going to entertain the crowds in London spectacularly, and in return, we are going to give you a terrific week in London, a week that's going to change your lives for the better forever, I like to think. So I very much look forward to seeing you in, what, nine months' time? At the end of the year in London. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. And before we go, a, a couple of remarks from uh, our folks here at UTC. First, please welcome our provost, Gerald Hale. Thank you and good afternoon uh, to our guests. I want to thank you very much for this wonderful honor to the university and to these amazing musicians. To our music faculty, uh, you are absolutely outstanding. To the members of the marching mops, the drum majors, and these outstanding musicians, this is an honor that is incredibly well deserved, and I congratulate you. Um, I would also say that my hope and what I truly believe will happen is that next year, as this contingent travels around, to extend invitations and the story is told of what the people who watch the parade love most about the parade is that next year they're going to say what I loved most about last year's parade was the marching mocks from the University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. You've yeah! done a great job of extending Southern hospitality to our guests. But now I'd like for you to take this opportunity to congratulate yourselves on an honor that's well deserved. And it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, Dr. Pamela Riggs Galasco.
audience, I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm a, I'm a fellow band member, so I'm a chemist by, by, uh, by day, but music has always been where my heart is, and I marched in uh, marching band all through college as well. Um, I remember my tour. We went to the greater Detroit area for our tour. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, but I still remember the music we played. I still remember the experience and the bonding that happens when you when you make music with one another. So I'm really super excited for you, um, and I'm also really excited because I'm going to tag along too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So now you guys have all of the uh, punch and cookies you can eat out in the lobby. So. Uh, please head out in the lobby and we're going to ask our guests to join us for a few minutes so you can have a chance to thank them. Thank you for coming today. I know it was a busy schedule and full of classes all day and uh, full of London type weather out there today. So uh, thank you for coming and congratulations. Thank you guys.